Welcome back to another top level game of Professional StarCraft 2. It's time for a Terran vs. Zerk, a best of three series where in game number one we find ourselves on... I think this map is called Golden Aura. Spotting right here in the top left hand corner. I hope I'm right. Playing with the blue Terran SCVs. We have the current world champion of StarCraft 2. He's from China and he goes by the name of Oliveira. The opponent in the opposite corner, playing with the red Zerg pieces from South Korea. We're looking at none other than Dark's main hatchery. It is Golden Aura. I mean, to be fair, Golden Aura is a little bit easy because, well, the map is golden. And it's got a very nice, you know, bluish aura around it as well. Problem is that there's a lot of golden maps. But this time around, actually, with the new StarCraft 2 map pool. I mean, I say new, it's been around for like... A month and a half maybe at this point or so but all of the maps are visually all very distinct which is kind of cool i don't know if that's by design and if they like specifically chose the maps based off of how they look i mean i would appreciate it i'm assuming that the map layout is the primary criterion that they have but anyways there's no denying that the maps that we do have right now all look a little bit different there's yeah not another map out there right now i don't think so anyways that has a blue and gold color scheme with yeah, a very similar look, like, for example, Golden Aura. Anyhow, let us have a look at exactly what we've got going here. Dark, uh, he's forgotten his gas geyser. I mean, I don't think he's forgotten it. Interesting. So what exactly are we going to do, Dark, if we're not gonna go for a gas? So the most important upgrade you can get as Zerk in the earlier stages of the game is, well, Metabolic Boost. Getting the Zerkling speed going nice and... Oh! Nice and early is usually what one of your early game goals is. Dark, however, he knows the rules. He's well familiar with the standard build orders. However, he he takes that stack of papers, right, with all of his build orders written on it, and he throws it out of the window, and then he picks up the pieces, throws them into the fireplace, and then he just cooks up whatever he feels like. So, Oliveira just scouted on the other side of the map, saw the timing right there of the expansion on the low ground, and he didn't even bother checking the third. Because nobody opens up gasless. Nobody takes a third before getting circling speed. Or at the very least, not, you know, without any gas slowly trickling in to get that link speed going eventually. Very greedy start right here from Dark, but of course, this is what he likes to do. Nice little bit of a Reaper skirmish right here to get things uh, to get things started with. Eventually, though, the Queen does come out. Can we target that one Zerkling? He tried. Not going to happen. The Zerklings will slowly regen HP, although... Yeah, they had to be nicely done. They had to be coming to the front. Now, that is... Oh. <laughs> that is a little unlucky. I actually think it's... Yeah, I think it's okay. I think it's okay to give up your Reaper Terran good. Dark's already insulting his opponent. You'll love to see it. Terran good? No, no. <clears throat> the thing is, against Dark, I don't think I would want to lose my very first Reaper in exchange for a Creep Tumor. There's always a chance that Dark right now would cancel Zorkling Speed, add a second Gas Geyser, and rush you with Roaches and Ravagers. However, if you know that your opponent is not, well, in this particular case, he's not even able to do so, but if you know your opponent doesn't really have that tendency, I think it's okay to trade a Reaper for a Creep Tumor, because it really does slow down the Zerk quite a bit. So wait, Dark's first instinct is to laugh at his opponent as soon as that Reaper died? I think it's okay. Yeah, I think it's okay. Oftentimes in a macro game of StarCraft 2, we see the Reaper just sort of dying later on. There's really not that much to worry about, but this can be, a, yeah, a little bit risky here. So if Oliveira decides to go and follow this up right now with a Banshee to stop any sort of potential roach aggression that could be coming across, okay, well, he would at the very least be somewhat safe. He decides to not go ahead and do so. Instead, he's going to go, for, well, maybe he will still go for the tech lab over here. It's a little bit funky over here. There's a little setup here from the Terran. What exactly... Ah, we're gonna just go into siege tank production then. Okay, fair enough. I was wondering uh, if we were gonna do the switcheroo right there and still go for Benchies. Either way, Oliveira is gonna do his continued scouting, apparently. He did show the widow mine there, I think. Anyhow, he's gonna do his continued scouting right here with these units. They're probably not, well, aware of the fact that this is a scouting mission. They think they are well-trained marines and ready for combat, but really, these guys are not gonna be able to get much damage done, other than maybe another creep tumor? Maybe an overlord or two. They're mostly just getting a whole lot of vision. Now, the follow-up right here from Dark has been incredibly passive. So still no Zerkling speed. As a matter of fact, in this particular case, I don't think he's going to be getting Link speed at all. He decided to go double gas, a Roachworn, a Lair, and he's still just powering out, well, a whole lot of workers. So his economy, yeah, 
57, 59 drones right now already. That's honestly absurd. A little bit risky over here as well with that queen movement, but eventually we should be able to push all of this back. Yeah, that Metafek is gonna go down. That's a little bit unfortunate. I don't think I like this start very much anymore for Oliveira. Yeah. I don't think he realizes how greedy his opponent has been. I mean, he did see the third base there eventually, but it's difficult to deduce exactly what's going on on the side of the Zerg when you don't have perfect vision. Dark basically decided to cut seven corners, and if his opponent decided to go for any sort of early game all-in, it would have backfired. But luckily right here for Dark, it did not happen, and... Well, he's playing a series, right? He's not gonna go for the same build order three times in a row. I don't think he will bust out this... this, this it would be insane if he busted out again. Because there's a lot of things that Oliveira could have done to punish it. But it didn't happen in this game. And now Dark is off to a flying start. So, straight Roach Speed. Straight 1-1 one, one upgrades here as well for those Roaches. We can transition towards Hydras and Lurkers and all the rest of it. Oliveira at this point, mostly just, yeah, doubling down on that bio train. So... He's got a third command center about, I want to say, three quarters of the way done here at the six minute mark, but that's all things considered also pretty late. And for the next couple minutes still, yeah, Dark is going to have an overwhelming economical advantage, and that will result in just way more stuff. And that's kind of the trick with StarCraft, right? Like, it's really easy to get carried away with unit compositions and think, oh, I need to be sprinkling in three Marauders right now and I'd be perfect. Honestly, 99% of the time, especially below the professional level. Just the guy with more stuff is the one who ends up winning. Now, this little attack right here from the Zerk is decent enough. The problem is he doesn't have any upgrades yet. So, yeah, those Siege Tanks are having a grand old time, but he just has the numbers. I don't think this is necessarily a bad trait right here for Oliveira, but he doesn't really have the economy on the back of it. Now, those low HP Roaches are going to be morphed into Ravagers, and they will spawn once again with full hit points. We have another matter of fact drop now heading towards the right side of the map. Yeah, I think Oliveira right now is smelling what's going on in this game. He realizes that there is just about to be a massive Roach army at his front door. He's bringing everything back home right now desperately, but does he have enough to stop 160 army right here, or 160 supply worth of Zerg? This is just a good old 1-1 Roach rush. Yeah, the supply depots are down right now. I was gonna say, that looks like an invitation to me. I think it's bait, though. One of the tanks there does end up going down. That second tank in the back, already eight confirmed kills. Lowering the supply depot was by design. I think Oliveira made it look like he was weak, but he really wasn't. Okay, 11 drones right now on the back of it. 2-2 has been fired up as well by Dark. Despite the fact that Dark had a much larger army right there than the opponent, the positioning right there, and obviously those buildings helping out as well, ultimately gave Oliveira, well, everything he really needed here. Dark's not done yet, though. No, he's still adding on more. There's the Zerkling speed upgrade coming. Okay. In the meantime, on the side of the Terran, plus two has been fired up right here. He's going into the armor upgrade, too. It's been a bit of a tricky early game defense, but he's managed, right? And... With the third command center done and, well, now up and running, it's a recoverable game. I still don't like this position right here for the Terran, but it's manageable. Especially because Dark is just going full Sledgehammer Zerg here. Just non-stop roaches. Maybe some Zerglings on the back of this, but he has not gone for a Hive. There is no Hydra then, no Lurker then, none of that. It's just going to be more of the same. And honestly, it may very well work out, but it's becoming a little bit more desperate here. This is becoming a little bit more all-in. He could, I was gonna say, he could just transition while going for this attack. I don't think that would be a... Yeah, he's in such a good advantage right now, or he's got such a good advantage that that really isn't something he has to be too concerned by. I think he probably wants to go for an attack when 2-2 finishes, but that's still a while away. No cancel. Wow. So that's 300 minerals down the drain right there for the Zerg. Maybe not quite realizing how much Terran there really was there, but... Anyways, Dark is planning on winning this game right here, right now. This is before the 2-2 research is done, but he wants to commit this choke point over here, though. ay yeah, yeah, on Golden Aura is really nice for the Terran. Those siege tanks are having a grand old time constantly shelling away at whatever they can hit. And you know what? That was another massive disadvantage right there for Oliveira, but the position is good. And in the meantime... The bio attack on the other side of the map loaded into the medevac and they sniped the lair. Now it was a one-way trip in the end for these lads. But that has just now evened up the game. Yeah. Yep. Ultimately, very nice exchange right there for Oliveira. So 
We saw the infestation pit already. The thing about the infestation pit is that it unlocks the ability for you to morph a lair into a hive, but it turns out the lair just got sniped. So Dark just took a massive economical hit, as far as like the army lost goes, and on top of that he can't really transition towards a hive nearly as easily here either. We're gonna have to wait until that lair is done and eventually a hive. He's losing several minutes worth of time, which in a game of StarCraft 2 is a lot. In the meantime, we have the plus three research fired up right here. Oliveira has got a very cursed set of upgrades. We have plus one, plus three, plus two. But ultimately, I mean, if this game goes on for another couple minutes, he will catch up in those upgrades and everything is going to be A-OK -okay for him. Dark has decided to expand all over the map. Now he's forced into melee upgrades too, because he can't get 3-3 started. He's still poking over here at the front, but none of those attacks have been particularly successful. Now he's also sitting at only 55 workers versus 68 from Oliveira. I wonder if Oliveira is even realizing the situation that he's in right now. Like, he definitely knew he was on a massive back foot earlier, but I think he's actually at an advantage now. Slowly positioning his siege tanks though. Look at the spread over here. Trying to make sure that none of them are going to be able to clip by the biles easily. Liberators are coming up on the production tab too. Yeah, he's inviting the Zerk into that choke point. He's like, bro, come. Come and play. You said Terran no good? Oh no, he said Terran good. Never mind. <laughs> Oliveira said Terran not good. Okay, fair. Of course, definitely not biased whatsoever, by the way, guys. No, 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 no. Nah, no, definitely, definitely no, no Terran bias anyway. <laughs> Anyways, moving forward over here. Siege tank goes down. Yeah, this map is uh, really nice to defend on, huh? Those siege tanks are having a grand old time. There's no way, Dark. That's not going to happen. And now suddenly, 4th Command Center is going to land. Planetary Fortress can be built. There it goes. I think we should go into uh, a couple of ghosts. A transition. Dark, in the meantime, does finish up the hive here in just a couple of seconds, but what's he gonna add on? We see a beanling nest right now, plus two melee, okay. He did fire up a ton of additional workers, but he's still only at sitting, uh, sitting at only 71. Now, there is a chance here, since Dark is making it look like he's still in a very strong position in this game, that Oliveira is misreading this a bit, because this has been very chaotic and difficult to actually, like, we have perfect vision, right? We see everything that's going on, but... Not quite the case for these players. There's a good chance that Oliveira does not quite realize the situation that he's now finding himself in, because it's hard to actually keep your screen on every single engagement that's happening. So he's just sprinkling in a little bit of harassment. But I actually think it could go for an all-out assault right now. Well, a desperation move is like the last thing we need, though. I was going to say, if we're going to boost units into the main base, I don't think that's really needed. If you're behind, sure. But if you're at a game where you're actually finding yourself in a pretty good spot, I don't think you really want to be going for that sort of all-in. Yeah, Ghost Academy right now has indeed finished. We're gonna go for three additional barracks over here at home. These will get little tech labs on them and we can start bumping out those ghosts. But like three at a time at least. Okay, a re-snipe right there of the main base once again. And now suddenly Dark is starting to play catch-up really aggressively. You can't really play a cost-inefficient army like the one that Dark is playing off of only 69 workers. That's just not enough. I mean, those Biles have been pretty neat though. Okay, he does snipe the Hatcher in the end. But, yeah, he does have the gold base right now taken in the bottom left. This gets scanned as well by Oliveira, so he knows what he's up against. But this is not a unit composition that you can really sustain. Like, Roach Ravager with Ling Bane on the back of it, it's not something you can really sustain off of this economy. You're really aiming for anything closer to like 100. We see players playing Ling Bane based armies off of like 100 workers and I, I don't think that would be a bad choice. Dark still has a bit of a bank, he's gonna go into a Hydro then and we'll probably see... I was gonna say a Lurker then, but instead we're gonna see the wireframe right there of a Spire. Fair enough, maybe he's thinking about Brute Lords? I don't know. Anyways, maybe a couple Corruptors to get rid of all of those Liberators that are, well... <laughs> were produced? Both players, by the way, had an even amount of workers. Both of them sitting at 69. Nice. Sorry. I'm pretty sure one day I'll be in a retirement home. I'll be like, you know, 112 years old, because by then we'll definitely get that old, right? StarCraft 3 may have been released. Somebody will say the name or the, 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 the number 69, and I will still, yeah, have the gut response to say nice. I can't help it, guys. It is what it is. I'll be a very childish 112-year-old. That's... <laughs> that's for sure, yeah. 
playing video games my whole life. What else did you expect? Anyways, couple snipes going down over here. A Ravager's not achieving much anymore. And this is... I don't like this army anymore for Dark, man. He needs something. Yeah. So Oliveira, by the way, is continuing his, his, his progression here as well. So he's decided to go into a couple Hellions here. This dance back and forth between the Ghosts and the rest of this Zerk army. I mean... I don't know what we're even fighting for. <laughs> we're fighting for scraps here. There's no way that, like, Zerk can push in with the siege tanks. And Oliveira realizes, like, he's just playing. Oliveira doesn't really want to fight. Uh, but yeah, there's no way Zerk is going to be able to punish this. Look at the siege tank spread, man. There's more coming up as well. We're already at 12. We're going to go up to 14. Okay, so I think originally the plan may have been to go into, like, Hydra Lurker or something. But I think Dark has figured out that... The best unit composition you can now go for is going to be based around Brute Lords and Infestors. Always a good unit composition. It's always been strong. And I think he's in the right here against a very siege tank heavy army. The thing is, well, we have the plus three attack here coming up for the mechanical units. A couple Thors would not be misplaced. The ghost numbers have been growing steadily. I think, yeah, with some blue flame helmets, he can negate a lot of the damage of those Brutelings as well. I think the ball right here is in Oliveira's court. The problem is that he doesn't know, right? Like, at this point, he's been dancing here for a while. These guys are singing songs. One of them probably brought a jukebox. Both of them realize they're not really playing for anything in this area of the map. They're just doing it for the crowd. Sorry, maybe I should be hyping up this battle, but it really isn't particularly important. I mean, these traits, yeah, I think it's about 50-50. I think Oliveira may actually be losing a little bit more than he bargained for, which is probably why Dark is taking it, but... Anyways, um, I would really love to see a scan over here to confirm a greater spire, or at the very least, some sort of scouting right now from Oliveira to see what he's playing against. Because he's been skirmishing, and it's been going decently well, but if he gets caught off guard by like 10 Brute Lords, this, yeah, can still definitely sink the Terran ship. Because. The Ghost numbers are good, but if the Brute Lord numbers are big enough, there's definitely a chance that the Zerg can catch you off guard. So keep an eye out right there on the production tab to see if there's any Brute Lords coming. Slowly but surely, the Roaches and Ravagers, which is also why Dark is skirmishing here, they're being traded out for better units. So, eight Brute Lords coming up. Completely unscouted, I believe. Roaches and Ravagers have been traded out for, well, now Hydras and Brute Lords and Lings and Bane, so much better units that will hopefully be at least more supply efficient. The Infestors are spotted. But he already had a couple Vipers as well, and this is something that Dark likes to mix in anyways. I'm a little bit concerned for those bad boys. They're obviously faster now with the new multiplayer balance patch. I do think overall it's a bit of a nerf, but in the right position, it can do a lot of damage. Okay, so this is the first time Oliveira sees it. Does he realize that, yeah, this is this has been going on? I don't think so. I don't think Dark should back off. I was gonna say, I, I think he just, like, was starting to break that siege tank clump over there. Yeah, that's what he's aiming for right now. Yeah, he wants to throw a couple of those Brutelings, and then hopefully have the opponent's siege tanks dealing friendly fire. Infestors are also in position to throw fungal growths on any of the ghosts that are overextending, but instead, we have the Infestors overextending. I think we just saw, like, five Infestors going down there. Still, though, this is a scary army. Yeah, Thors immediately get fired up. There's some Hydras here on the ground as well that will ultimately be quite nice. Blinding Cloud here goes down, but... Okay. This is scary, man. So, Thors are coming. I think there's a few of them out right now, yeah. So, in high impact mode, they do definitely beat Brute Lords one-on-one, -on -one, but that's kind of the problem here, right? This is no longer a one-on-one -on -one fight. Still, though, if Oliveira can just deflect this... So, this wasn't quite as overwhelming as I, well, probably think Dark hoped for. The traits have been good for him, don't get me wrong, but... As long as Oliveira gets a bit of time to put those factories to work and pump out some of the big heavy hitters, he'll probably be okay. More siege tanks, though, are starting to fall. A couple of the uh, ghosts are also dying, but nothing all too extreme. And some nice snipes right there by Oliveira. These guys are... They're dancing, man, with their units. It's interesting, right? I mean, they're not typing slash dance. That's not what I mean, but... Ultimately, they have been, like, sort of poking and prodding and, like, trying to... Yeah, get the opponent to wiggle forward in the wrong direction. But it's all pretty tame. Even though the skirmishes were going on for several minutes, neither of them was really hitting the all-army hotkey and just 
Go, 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 right? Like, none of that was going on there. Both of them very careful. With all of the ghosts right now spotted on the right side of the map, that apparently gave the opportunity right here for these brute lords to move on over towards the left. Couple more siege tanks here will definitely fall. Fungal growth, massive fungal growth right over there with those tunneled uh, infestors, and that now will make those ghosts, well, at the very least, the ones that can run away. Is there enough right here for the Zork to really break through this, though? I do not believe so. Okay. Dark once again decides to tippy-toe back. That was a good fungal growth. But I think like five out of the seven or so of these infestors that we've had have been mostly pointless. Then again, 22 ghosts have gone down in this game as well. You only see like one or two falling every time, but it adds up over the course of the game. Dark really making use, though, of these new... Uh Ferrari-powered, uh, Brute Lords, right? Like, they, they, no, they are noticeably faster in the new patch. I mean, they're Ferrari-powered, but only up to, like, second gear. So, uh, yeah, they, I mean, you can pro- I don't know, I've never driven a Ferrari. I think you can probably drive a Ferrari in, like, second gear up to, like, 100 kilometers. Easy. Somebody in the comment section could probably let me know. I mean, half my viewers own Ferraris and other luxury cars, no? Right? Anyways, I don't think I've ever driven, like, a high-end luxury car myself. I've never driven a BMW. <laughs> Not an Audi. No, I'm lame, dude. Anyways, we do uh, move forward over here. The Thor's starting to close the distance. Base up here, all the way north. Yeah, no, this one is certainly going to go down. Pretty expensive exchange right there for the Zerk, and he doesn't have that much money, so... Heh, 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 heh. This game really was off to a flying start for Dark. And I still think it's within his grasp to, you know, get the victory here. But I'm not really liking some of the decisions made in this game. Like, the harassment over here is really good. But trading against your opponent's planetary fortress like he just did... Well, you know there's gonna be more command centers on the back of it. I mean... Oliveira is almost taunting him right now by building those CCs in that location. Once again, he's moving forward over here. We do have a couple of Metavex as well joining with the Thors. That will be another planetary going down. Okay, another command center too and loads of SCVs. Okay, this trade over here on the, on the left of the map, I, I like a whole lot better. Okay. We have some more harassment now on the other side. Generally, I advise you don't really blow up planetary fortresses if you're sitting below like 80 workers, you know? Like, you want to have enough money in the bank to remax. Like, you don't want to do a bailing run by on credit, okay? <laughs> it's like a luxury vehicle. You probably don't want to be going into debt in order to do a bailing run by. It's, <laughs> it's just not a great idea if you, you know, if you, if you don't have to, if you feel like there's a better choice for you out there, Maybe just, you know, continue driving your old car for a little bit longer and use those Brute Lords to harass? There might be a better choice for you there. I know. It looks tempting sometimes, though. Zorkling run by. These are starting to hurt. Yeah, Oliveira not quite... Not quite defending in the late game as cleanly as he did in the early game. Still, that's mostly because he's got all of his army right now bunched up on the other side of the map. This base over here on the left did end up going down, but it was basically empty anyways. No more Vespian gas. We have, well, 60 minerals over here as well in the mineral field. Fair enough. Yeah, hatchery goes down there on the right. I think overall, Dark has been trading a little bit better over the last few minutes. He's trying to now also catch a couple of those units that are desperately trying to walk back home, using the advantage right there of the creep to see that Terran army retreating back and... Oh, quite a few ghosts end up going down there once again. Those Brute Lords have been harassing very nicely. Look at them, trying to stutter step Brute Lords. Yeah, ultimately though, I've got a feeling that the ghosts and the Thors are going to be able to uh, say goodbye to the Zerk army. Now suddenly though, okay. We have a 14 Lurker transition. Still, ghosts are, well, the jack of all trades late game unit for Terran. So, you know, they're good against Burnt Lords, good against Ultras, good against Lurkers, good against Vipers, good against Infestors. They're good against everything. So it's not like Oliveira doesn't have an answer here. But he needs to be careful. This is the first time he sees it. Massive fungal growth once again. Lurkers and Banelings trying to get in there. More fungals coming in from the left, but that was awfully expensive. 
Dark, dark, dark. I don't think that was really that necessary. Why did we send all of the infestors over in that direction? These are orbital commands, so they can lift off if these spines are starting to become a little bit troublesome. I mean, they can if they want to. Siege tanks are not going to be a great answer. Instead, what we're gonna do right now is just stim everything towards the other side of the map. Getting that movement speed on the bio units. We have a Zirkling Brute Lord run by. Those two Brutes from earlier still being a nuisance. Lurker's going to town over here. Guys, what a banger of a game. This is some gorgeous StarCraft we're watching here. 25 minutes in. I think I like the position a little bit better here for Dark, but it has been back and forth and back and forth for a long time now. Yeah, and this is still a Terran army that needs to be respected. So the little sword icon over here at the bottom is an indicator of the army supply count. We're talking 84 army supply for the Zerg versus 79 of the Terran. And that's because, well, Terran just doesn't have a lot of supply, aka Zero, caught up in workers at this point. He can still get some mules going if he has, well, any way of landing them, but there's a burrowed Zerkling over there. Hive is gonna end up going down. There's a few more Zerg units right now on the production tab, but some of those units, yeah, are stuck inside of the main base in the natural, so they're not gonna be able to get out. Ultimately, Dark is gonna have to fight his opponent's army, I believe. Because, yeah, Terran structures can fly. And much like your average Silver League hero, pro gamers will be more than keen to fly a command center into the corner of the map just to force the issue. Free Hydra over there, we have some Zorklings. If we could scan right now and get these units, that may honestly be an absolute game changer, but no Raven in the mix in this game, so... Yeah, these units are gonna be able to stay alive, burrowed into the main base of Dark for a little while longer. Yeah, I think we're gonna try and get these units back home. One thing to notice here, though, or one thing to note, I suppose, is that we don't have a lot of scans available anymore. Now, we have two orbital commands. They're in the main base. I think, yeah, unburrowing these Zerklings and just sort of forcing these units to lift off would be massive because you cannot scan if the structures are in the sky. So if these orbitals are forced to fly, that means that the lurkers, well, can basically push back this entire Terran army for as long as Oliveira decides to stand on the perimeter of the creep. So, oh no, we need to really stay in the main base. Just a small group of Zorklings. I mean, there's no energy anymore in these orbitals for now. That's the last scan for at least the next 20 seconds or so. Nice EMP right there by Oliveira. But Oliveira cannot push in here without a scan. It's not an option. He never made... Yeah, we're gonna send Lynx back in. I think that's the right move. I think Dark right now is starting to put the pieces together and he realizes that... He needs... He needs detection. So there's another scan. Can we get a couple of ghosts? Okay. That's one lurker down the drain. Maybe a second one? Okay. Maybe a third? No, not quite enough, but that's good. Those are the types of traits we want to see. One medevac full of units was boosted back home to try and keep these orbitals alive because they are the lifeline right here of Terran, but that's not going to happen. One orbital command is gonna fall. Second orbital command, I think, is not gonna be far behind. Okay, instead it's gonna lift off right now, but it's the lifeline here. He cannot fight this. And Dark right now is slowly building up his unit composition once again. He's building... Well, another spawning pool over here. If this orbital command starts burning, I think that'll be it. Then again, though... Yeah, we do have some other Terran units now available. That Burrow upgrade coming in so handy. We very rarely see it being used. Burrow is just not a very common upgrade to get. I mean, a lot of Zerg players will get it at some point in a game, but it's easily forgotten. But it turns out to be absolute gold in this particular match. Keep in mind, this is just game number one. Orbital Command right now burning. That's huge. We don't have an SCV. We do have another orbital, so maybe... Or, sorry, another command center. Maybe we can morph it into an orbital command. That Hydra has been tasked with killing that command center. It's not going to happen. Ultimately, though... Yeah, these lurkers need to be addressed. And this is taking too long. We've had some infestors back up on the production tab for a while already. There's another one of those... Uh, fungal growths and considering Terran is doing zero mining and Zerk is setting up a new expansion on the left I have a hard time seeing how this game is going to end up favorably right here for Oliveira that being said though that is still a scary Terran army <sighs> that lurker transition was really nice hmm yeah, the Metafex will accumulate energy over time. 
This command center is gonna fly away. Oliveira does not have any minerals anymore, does he? No, Oliveira has no way. Yeah, you can EMP him all you want. GG. Oliveira has no money. He can't morph in another orbital command. He cannot get detection of those lurkers. So it's Dark who wins an amazing game number one. Now, I know this is a bit of a running joke on the channel, but... Game of the year? <laughs> I have uploaded about half a dozen quote-unquote games of the year to my YouTube channel this year so far. Some of you have suggested I call it game of the month, but that does not have nearly the same amount of clickbait. <laughs> the click-through rate of a game of the month does not sound nearly as exciting to me as the click-through rate on a game of the year instead, but honestly, that was a beautiful game of StarCraft 2. Back and forth and back and forth and until like half an hour in, it, it, it was not obvious who could win. Yeah. And it was it was won because of detection too. I think ultimately, if that would have been a straight up fight, Oliveira could win, but he just didn't see the opponent's units. I mean, he did get rid of most of them. If he had just a couple more scans available, I think he would have been able to clear out the last of the lurkers, but I think Dark probably would have made a run towards the left side of the map. And yeah, Oliveira would have to start running around as well with his very slow army to figure out exactly where those, well, final Zerg units went. And he would probably stumble across a new base that Dark was mining from for a little while. I think Dark at that point would have had a few infestors there. And yeah, even with an additional scan, it would be very difficult, I think, for Oliveira to win the game. But that was a very close finish for sure. Anyhow, game number two. We find ourselves on the map Heart Lead. What you looking at? A gas geyser. Yeah, I would have been very surprised if Dark decided to do the exact same build order a second time in a row. That would have been crazy. So, do we mix it up here at all, Dark? Do we decide to go for a gas geyser? Sure, but do we also go for like a roach all-in early on this time around? So, like a three and a half minute roach war and quickly send it across the map? One thing I've noticed in Dark's games over the years is that generally when the opponent is gonna give him that Reaper early on, and I've been doing this in every single one of my Zerg versus Terrans, and I highly recommend you do as well if you're a Zerg player. Um, generally, if he's playing a normal start and the opponent gives him the Reaper, he will cancel Link Speed immediately and go for the Roach Warren and rush Roaches towards the other side of the map. It obviously depends on the moment at which that Reaper is lost, but if it's early on, you can punish Terrans really hard, because they will have absolutely no way to properly scout you anymore. Like, obviously, they could go for a scan, <laughs> but that's way too expensive and not really a reasonable suggestion. So, yeah, losing the Reaper, it's a gamble for Terrans. Now, it paid off in the previous game somewhat, right? Mostly because Oliveira had a bit of a misread. I guess it still didn't really pay off that great, but at least he didn't die to, like, a Roach Rush or something along those lines. All right, anyways, triple command center opener right here for Ollie. We'll probably see a starport here eventually as well. We're needing 100 gas. Boom. Oh. 150 minerals. Boom. Hey, there it is. My second boom. My second boom is what mattered. Okay. Are we going to do a switcheroo here at Olivera? Are we going to go for a little bit of, uh, yeah, okay. A little bit of double Hellion play. I don't mind it. Interesting to see three Marines here before we really add on anything, but... Zirkling run by on the other side of the map. Getting a mule! Ooh, that was a pretty fresh one, too. Not bad right there for Dark. Although we hit... Yeah, a small little supply block right here in the process. I mean, it's got a hatchery finishing up and... Okay. Well, I was talking about it. That's about a 340-ish Roach Warren. Yep. So he's gonna go for an all-in. This is a good all-in against the triple CC opener that skips Benchies. <laughs> and this is why I recommend you don't skip Benchies if you're a Terran player and you open up triple CC, especially when you lose your scouting measure. I think you should pretty much always go into Benchies because the Benchies are very good at harassing the Zerg, but they're also like a wearing a seatbelt, you know, to continue the car analogy for a little bit longer. It's like, yeah, you could rely on your airbags. Not only is it illegal, you probably shouldn't. I mean, skipping the Benchie is... I, I think it's legal. I mean, don't don't quote... I don't, I don't know the law that well, but I'm pretty sure you are allowed to skip the Benchie. But, I... Yeah, it, this is this is a safe approach. So, I mean, safe. You still need to micro, obviously. Getting that Overlord over there is really nice. 
Anyhow, we've got eight roaches coming up right now. Dark is going to go for a roach, ravager, ling, all in. There's no benchies or anything like that. Oliveira at this point doesn't know what he's playing against, but he did go for the benchie and he's saving up a second one too. Not sending this one across the map. Dark is going to drone behind it together with a lair. Okay. So I think he wanted to go for an all-in, but now he finds himself with an awkward set of units, so he's still sort of going to try. But he also realizes that it's probably not going to happen. So normally what you want to do as a Zerk is flood the map with Zerklings. Flood the map with little Zerklings. La, 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 la. Okay. Maybe that's a bit too early. I mean, it's it's been getting very cold outside over here in the Netherlands, at least. It's very rainy right now. We just need a little bit of snow. It's raining right now as I'm recording this, actually. It's been coming down pretty much all day. Anyways, maybe a little bit early though for, for Christmas songs. Yeah, but anyways, so Dark wanted to go for a push, didn't go for the push, and now he's sitting here with his units, and he's trying to, yeah, drone behind it, but I'm not really loving this, you know? I'm not hating it, but I'm not loving it. The problem is that the third command center at this point is done, and while up to this point, yeah, it's been Oliveira in the lead economically by a small amount, over the next couple of minutes, unless Dark holds down the drone button for the foreseeable future, Oliveira is gonna start really pulling ahead economically. He's now also gonna YOLO in. Oh, he could go. <gasps> he could have gone. He thought it was bait. He gave his opponent the benefit of the doubt. Oh, that's a missed opportunity and a half right there. That was a wide open expansion. There were like six Zerklings. Anyways, he didn't really wanna he didn't really wanna take the risk there. Fair enough. Instead. We're gonna go and rely on the more conventional tools here. Stimpak, plus one, plus one. Combat shields. Maybe some concussive grenades. Second factory, sure. I mean, those siege tanks were pretty amazing in the first game of this series, until the Brute Lords came out, they dominated the battlefield. We do have Roach Speed here coming up, but with plus one melee and plus one carapace here, and an infestation pit as well. Okay. These are the latest Benchies I've seen in, like, a month. I mean, I understand that they were out at the appropriate time. But, like, these... This is what we consider an anti-timing, okay? It's when you know your opponent is so good at the conventional timing that you know you're not gonna get any work done, so you try and come in at a moment where they don't expect it, and you cross your fingers and hope they're not paying attention anymore. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, theoretically... More likely to get damage done, it seems, at this level of play, than the more flushed out version of this build order. Which is kind of funny. Do love this little move, by the way, though. Those Hellions have cleared the vision of the Zerg on the right side of the map, so these two Metavex right now are only gonna get spotted right about right now. Boost into the main base with a slow-moving army like this one. Yeah, relatively slow. For a slow-moving Zerg army, I guess. Uh, yeah, no. Dark is gonna be forced to run on over towards the main base. This time around, I think he's gonna be able to defend it, but as the game goes on, and we see more and more moves like that, if Dark would have been sitting with his army over here, they would not have arrived in the main base in time, or at the very least not, well, at the moment that he was hoping for. Plus two, plus two. Can we get the second upgrade going, please? Oliveira really pumping out his siege tanks. He doesn't have a lot of gas. We should get that second upgrade going here ASAP. That could actually be a mistake. Dark finished up 1-1 just now, so upgrades at this point in the game are even. Bailing speed nowhere to be seen yet, and that siege tank clump over here, man. Ay ay ay. Once again, it's like a beautiful anchor here for Oliveira. He's using siege tanks incredibly well. There's the Benchies also flying in from the north. He's like, hey guys, we heard there was a fight over here. Ah, uh, this base is dead. There's no way Zerk can hold on. Yeah, the only saving grace here is that Oliveira did not start up his plus two armor, but... If this game continues the way it seems to be going right now, he won't be needing it either. Oh, Dark decides to commit over here. One siege tank a little bit late to the party, but still stays alive. Hive at this point is done, so Vipers are coming. Vipers are really good at blinding clouding, of course, these units, but... Oliveira is just moving forward here. I don't know if he realized that his opponent wanted to go for essentially a Roach all-in and he never really got there, but he is punishing his opponent beautifully for it, though. Either that or he just saw a weakness, right? Like, he just saw a weakness in his opponent's play. And he, yeah, he just started 
pushing and he realized, yo, wait a second. I might just be able to push for the win here. Maybe not quite yet, but... For all intents and purposes, this is looking pretty rough now. <laughs> we have an Ultralisk Cavern coming up here. This is an Ultralisk Cavern before any sort of plus two armor upgrade. Ultras without armor upgrades are really kind of weak. Oliveira also a little bit late on the armor upgrade, but for bio units, I mean, yeah, there we go. As long as we go into the attack upgrades, those are far more important. Whereas for the Ultras, the armor upgrades are, well, at, at least usually the uh, go-to choice. Matter of fact, drop once again on the right side of the map. Zorkling, though, is going to touch the Watchtower here and seize these Meta Vecs. In the meantime, we also had a double drop towards the bottom left. This one, I mean, there are units waiting for the Zerk, but they're now an upgrade behind, and these bio units don't mess around. Right-clicking the base itself, okay. Yeah, the Vipers are a bit close, but nice splits over there, all things considered. I don't think they're going to go down, because it's 120 damage for a Parasitic Bomb. It's 150 life for a Meta Vec, so... Both of them do indeed have, well, pretty much 30 hit points remaining. Nice little dance over here on the edge of the creep as well. Holy Vera. Looking dominant here in game number two, man. In a way, though, this was almost given a little bit by his opponent, right? So, yeah, whenever people ask, like, hey, why don't you cheese every single game? This is a good example. Even though nothing went horribly wrong for Dark here in this game, he decided to go for a build order that was aggressive. He saw the opponent's benches and he decided, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put my foot on the brake. To continue the car analogy. <laughs> I'm gonna slide forward if I do continue right now. So I'll hit the brake and I'll stop it right here. And ultimately, that just now allows Oliveira to outgrow his opponent very rapidly. Now, of course, he's doing an amazing job on the back of his too, right? Like he is just microing his absolute butt off, hitting his opponent at so many different angles at once, and constantly, yeah, a step ahead here of Dark. But this is nice to see, though, because a couple months ago... Okay, actually, hold that thought for just a moment. Uh, there's no way. Nah, there's no way. A couple months ago, it looked like Oliveira was struggling a little bit after he won the StarCraft II World Championships, but this right here is looking world-class. Okay, so, our final game for today, it takes place on the map El Cyanide. Beautiful series of StarCraft 2 so far. Now, before this series really gets underway, or before this game, rather, really gets underway, I wanted to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters today. Massive shout-out to the people that decided to, well, directly support this channel. There's a couple of perks as well that you get for signing up on Patreon, so if you're interested, there's a link down below in the description of this video. It's an easy way to, well, directly support me for making this type of content. Completely optional, of course, but if you do decide to sign up, definitely make sure to send me a message and... Say hi. Maybe we can talk some StarCraft? I don't know. We can, we can talk build orders. What? Well, this is not... This, um, this is a mistake. That's an evolution chamber, guys. That is not a spawning pool. <laughs> uh, Dark? Dark, hello. Oh, no. He has no idea. There are some builds, or there used to be builds, where you would go for a... How does he not... Like, you must realize at this point... Oh, my God. Yeah. You must realize at some point that you have too many minerals in the bank and something is off. There were some builds back in the day where you would, like, rush out one of the upgrades. Like, usually plus one melee from the evolution chamber. But, yeah, now the evil chamber is just sort of sitting here. We don't even have remotely enough gas. Dark decides to go... Okay. Um, to just go for a third base. You know what? I actually kind of like this. This is one of those situations where you're going to lose the early game if the opponent decides to push anyways. And that's already not something you can recover from. So you may as well just put all of your eggs in one basket and add a couple more and then start swinging the basket. And then maybe eventually you do come out ahead. Now Oliveira scouted it. He sees three idle larvae. There are not supposed to be idle larvae sitting there. Queens are coming right now. He saw the lack of wiggling in the hatchery too, so he realized that a queen wasn't building. <sighs> this is a weird opener. But then again, this is also a weird opener right here for Oliveira to scout. So maybe Oliveira is looking at this game right now and he thinks it's... It's hatch hatch into a spawning pool with a gas geyser? That's probably what's going on here. There's a good chance that Oliveira assumes that it is hatchery into another hatchery into a gas geyser into a spawning pool. When in reality it was a hatchery 
into a gas geyser, into an evolution chamber, into a spawning pool, into a hatchery. <laughs> These are build orders that nobody plays, guys. Neither the first nor the second. So, I, I can imagine... <clears throat> I can imagine that Olivera is getting a bit of a misread here. There's no way that this was intentional. I'm trying to think if there was a way that this was intentional for Dark. There's no way it was. This was certainly a mistake. And honestly, a very uncharacteristic one. To be fair though, if any top level pro gamer was gonna make the mistake of confusing an evolution chamber with a spawning pool, it would be Dark. <laughs> Not to be mean or anything, but like, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, no, that, that could certainly be Dark. Anyhow, what's going on in the meantime on the other side of the map? Okay, we have a 2-1-1 with, thri oh, with triple CC over here, and then also some Hellions. Are we gonna go for a Starport next? I think we should, yeah. So that's a Starport coming up. We'll probably go for a Reactor and then go into, like, eventually a bio-based army here. So eventually, like, a delayed 16 Marine-esque sort of opener. But then with triple CC and obviously some Hellions here, too. Dark decided to go for the plus one melee, mostly because he had the Evo Chamber. I think that's the reason. Unless he had some sort of 300 IQ strategy. Now, nice grenade over there by Oliveira, booping those queens back, but... I think there's enough Zerklings. Yeah, he's been making links for a little bit already. Probably was intending on being aggressive on the other side of the map with plus one finishing up right now, but... Yeah, it's still a lot of links going down. 16 units have gone down on the side of the Zerk. 17. Okay. What a strange game. Yeah, in a game like this, when everything is a bit weird, I think it's probably easier to be the aggressor than it is to be the defender. Because usually being the defender requires you to be a little bit more delicate and a little bit more precise with your actions, whereas, you know, being the aggressor, it's like, me smash, me make unit, me hit opponent, me get rock, me just throw the rock at, at you know, like, it's a bit, it's a bit easier. So... For this particular situation, I guess it makes sense for Dark to be aggressive, but... We saw the game defense there from Oliveira in game number one of this series, and he was excellent, right? Like, he won, like, that fight with, like, 92 supply for, like, 160 from the Zerg. That was really well done there by Oli, so... I've got a feeling that this is going to still be an uphill battle right here for Dark, despite the fact that he has quite cleverly come back into this particular match after, well, such a gigantic error there. Like, that just slows your entire early game down by, like, a full minute or however long the duration of a spawning pool is. It takes a long time to build. Okay. So, ultimately, good old bio-based army right here for Terran versus a good old Ling-based army here from the Zerk. These are plus one melee Zerklings. Oliveira, no! Okay. First the Hellions, now the Medivac. I mean, the Hellions were a hell of a lot better than, you know, that meta effect we just saw going down. Not a huge fan of that. Bailing Nest coming up right now, by the way, together with a Lair. Second Aoife Chamber in the main base, too. Dark's almost like acting like this was intentional. There is no way that that was intentional. I, I, there's no way. That build order made no sense. Anyways, Oliveira going into the armory right now, ready to go into 2-2. Zorkling's over here. I mean, catching the Terran player off guard, but excellent crisis management here by Oliveira. Moving all of those units back to, well, these choke points over here, right? Fun fact, Zerklings are unable to walk on glass. I know. I guess, uh, yeah, it, 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 their, their feet are slippery or something. I don't really know exactly what's going on there, but they cannot actually get the surround in over there, so... Hmm. That means that Oliveira right now grabs the supply lead. He may have actually already had it for a little bit here. <laughs> What a strange game. Okay, so... Scan is going to reveal some of the creep tumors. Pushing that back is really lovely. I think this is a much more comfortable game right now for Oliveira than it is for Dark. Yeah. He can just sort of play his normal game here. Even though he went here in a bit of a strange way. And he may have not been intending to be in this particular scenario. I think he's feeling pretty comfortable. Whereas I think Dark is still playing catch up in his mind. Still just trying to somehow, some way, wiggle this game into an advantage. And it's close. But not perfect. Now, that Overlord there did scout. Yeah. 
that there were liberators coming across the map. So we have some spore crawlers building on the side of the Zerg. Dark's mining out this little mineral wall over here too to maybe go for an expansion here at the 6 o'clock position. But he's got to be careful already. Terran's ready to boost on over towards the southern section of this map. Spore crawler is done. Spore crawler over here also done, but... Those Liberators can still get some work done, especially while the Terran here is distracting him at the front. Three drones so far. More Banelings over here connecting as well. Big Zorkling run by attempted, but a couple of Hellbats at home as well, trying to get some work done. Liberator here, repositioned, getting more and more kills in. This one over here still going to town too. Bio Army, okay, gets picked up and runs away. Those Zerklings that were set up on the other side of the map for harassment have already fallen. Well, I mean, they've not fallen, but they had fallen back, I guess. They're now in the main base of the Zerk player. Overlords are starting to fall, and those Liberators, and maybe a couple of kills as well. Nice targeting right here by those Marines. A couple of them have maybe also targeted the drone previously. Overlords are being popped left, right, and center. And I believe that Oliveira is heavily outplaying Dark now. This is an uphill battle where it is going to be incredibly hard to come back. The thing is, this was just like phase one to a multi-layered attack here from Oliveira. The real attack is coming as soon as 2-2 finishes. And those upgrades, well, we're only a little while away. Those Zorkling runbys have achieved very little. Dark sees what he's up against right now. He recognizes the situation of the game and he decides to tap out. What a great series of StarCraft. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to watch more, I upload new videos pretty much every single day. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. For now, though, thank you very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile, and I'll see you very soon for another video.